So fluids is one of those topics in medical school which is actually integrated into first and second year curriculum, except because it's taught out of context, you hit the words thinking, why haven't they ever taught this to me? You'll actually be surprised about how much of this you know, especially if you've done any inpatient rotation. So today we're going to go over the three fluids you should know exist in clinic land, normal saline, lactated ringers, and colloids. So first let's start off with why do we give IV therapy? So IVs are a needle connected to a bag of fluid inserted into someone's vasculature, and we give it when we want to manipulate the fluid contents of the vasculature space. So if someone is bleeding out of every orifice, if we're trying to give someone medications, or if we're trying to play around with someone's fluid or electrolyte balance, these are the times when we're going to be giving someone fluids. So there are really only two main groups of fluids. There are the crystalloids and the colloid solutions. So let's talk about colloids first. Colloids, which you may remember from high school chemistry, are essentially large molecular weight particles suspended in solution. So they look somewhat like this. So if we were to give someone colloid solution, or i.e. insert colloid solution into someone's vasculature space, being large molecular weight particles, the solution is mainly going to stay in someone's intravascular space compared to fluids such as crystalloids, which we're going to talk about later. So if you remember back to Starling's forces, you can figure out the mechanism as to why this is so. So basically, this makes sense. We're pushing volumes of fluid into the vasculature because we want the volumes of fluid to stay in the vasculature and not leak out. Now, because we've already established the fact that colloids will mostly stay in the vasculature, we administer them in a one-to-one -one ratio. So one liter of blood loss requires one liter of colloid replacement. Now, this will be important a little bit later on when we talk about crystalloids. So the most common colloid solution that you're going to hear about in the wards is 5% albumin. Other colloid solutions that you might hear about include 25% albumin, dextran, or head of starch. You'll probably not hear colloids given all that often, except in patients who have had large protein losses, i.e. burn victims, or patients who have failed crystalloid therapy. That's mainly because these are more expensive than their crystalloid counterparts. Sure, we can toss in slightly higher incidence of adverse reactions, yada yada, but really a lot of it boils down to expense. So the next type of fluid we're going to talk about are the crystalloids. Now what often baffles me about science is why something so simple needs such a fancy term. Crystalloids you can really think about as water plus electrolytes. There we go. Many types of solutions fall under this category, except today we're going to talk about the two main ones, normal saline and lactated ringers. So let's talk about normal saline first. So normal saline is basically 154 milliequivalents of sodium and 154 milliequivalents of chlorine. This is the most commonly used fluid on the floors. And really, if someone were to ask you what type of fluid to give, 99% of the time this choice will be OK. It may not be the most optimal, but it will definitely not hurt your patient. This is mainly due to the fact that normal saline is isoosmolar to plasma. However, the reason that it is not considered a colloid solution is because it does not contain any particles. So if we remember back to what exactly a colloid solution is, it's a solution with large molecular weight particles. And again, when given, the colloid solution is mostly going to stay in your intravascular space. Okay. If on the other hand we give a crystalloid solution, excuse my drawing, because the crystalloids, sodium and chloride, they're not large molecular weight particles, they are going to diffuse out into the 
interstitial spaces. So if you remember back when we talked about the one-to-one -one ratio for colloid replacement, crystalloids require a three-to-one ratio. So that means three liters of crystalloid solution are required to replace one liter of colloid solution. Sorry, one liter of blood loss. So three liters of crystalloid solution for one liter of blood loss. So finally, the last solution we're going to talk about is lactated ringers. So for those of you who like numbers, I've put up the numbers of what lactated ringers really entails. It's a fluid that's said to be physiologically similar to plasma than saline solutions. You're going to typically hear lactated ringers thrown around the surgical floors as these are a favorite for surgeons. However, there really isn't conclusive evidence for lactated ringers working better than normal saline in most cases, except for in the following. Don't use lactated ringers for patients with hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, cerebral edema, or hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. If you really want to understand why, just look back to the contents of lactated ringers and you can probably solve this on your own. So finally, take home points, colloids, Albumin is the most common. They're usually not used because they're expensive. Crystalloids entails water plus electrolytes. This means normal saline lactated ringers. They're used because they're cheap. Normal saline is the most commonly used. Lactated ringers is most commonly used in surgery. However, it is less useful in patients with cerebral edema, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis, hyperkalemia, and hyponatremia. Thank you and hope you understand fluids a little bit better.